In a nutshell, attacker needs to find a way to reroute the traffic to the evil genix proxy first the real server, as doing so, the user will be able to see the real site and not a replica as used in phishing site method. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yaniv Hoffman and I'm an IT and cybersecurity expert with more than 23 years experience in the industry. I created this channel to contribute from my knowledge and experience to increase our safety in the cyber world. Now, in today's digital age, protecting your online accounts is more important than ever. One way to do it is by using a two-factor authentication or 2FA for short. But why should you use 2FA? So in today's environment, a traditional username and password combination can be easily guessed or stolen, leaving your accounts vulnerable to hacking. Two-factor authentication adds an extra layer of security by requiring a second form of verification in addition to your password. This can be done through a variety of methods, such as receiving a code via text message or using a biometric feature like your fingerprint or face. This makes it much harder for hackers to gain access to your account. Setting up two-factor authentication is easy and can usually be done through the account setting of the service you are uh, using. Many popular websites and apps such as Google, Facebook and Twitter offer two-factor authentication as an option. Now, I know the subject of the video is how hackers can bypass the 2FA or MFA. So you can ask yourself, should I still use such method? Good question, but the answer is at the end of the video. Yet, it will be worth it, I promise, since I will explain in more detail, but in a simplified way, the hacker methods, ways to protect, pros and cons on its solution. So let's start. So how two-factor authentication works? And two-factor authentication works by requiring an additional piece of information, in addition to your password, to verify your identity and grant access to your account. The second piece of information is typically a code that is sent to your phone or email or generated by authentication app. And here is a basic breakdown of how 2FA works. So first, you enter your username and password as usual to log into your account. The service then sends you a code or generates a code in an authenticator app. You enter the code to complete the login process. And by using the 2FA, even if a hacker gets hold of your password, they will still be unable to access your account without the second piece of information, which is the code. And I think this is clear, and I think most of us already use that in some way. Now, there are different types of 2FA methods available, such as SMS codes, the service sends a code to your phone via text message, Authenticator application, you can use apps like Google Authenticator or Otri to generate a code. Security keys, you can use a physical security key like a USB a drive which you insert into your computer and press a button on to generate a code. Or biometric authentication which you can use your fingerprint or face to verify your identity. Now, each of these methods has its own advantages and drawbacks, as everything in life, but they all serve the same purpose, which is to provide an extra layer of security for your accounts. Sometimes you may hear people talk about 2FA and MFA, so, but what's the differences and who is more, which system is more secure? I think the primary difference is that with multi-factor authentication, a site may require more than two bytes, a bits of information to verify your identity. For example, a site may require you to provide the correct username and password, along with a PIN number and the correct answer to a security question. Thus, it's considered more secure between the two. In theory, the more kinds of authentication, the safer the site is. However, the average user gets frustrated by too many factors. And that's why 2FA became the norm. Yet, like everything good in, the, in this world, there are also some uh, 
dark sides that try to exploit it, right? So now I would like to talk about the four most common hackers techniques to bypass it along with some tips to defend such uh, tries. Plus, and you know what? Maybe the end zone that I wanted to do, I will save for another uh, video. So if you want to show you an end zone of how to bypass the 2FA, please like and subscribe. So what are the four most common methods? The first is Evil uh, Genix uh, 2. Second is Pest the Cookie. Third is SMS, Man in the Middle. Four is Attack on a Soft Token. So Evil Genix, and Evil Genix is a Man in the Middle attack framework used for pishing login credential along with session cookies, which in turn allows to bypass two-factor authentication protection. The tool is successor to Evil Genix uh, 1, of course, released in 2017, which used the custom version of NGNX HTTP server to provide a man-in-the-middle functionality to act as a proxy between a browser and pitched website. Present version is fully written in Go as a standalone application, which implements its own HTTP and DNS server, making it extremely easy to set up and use. There are many videos about it, I'm not going to explain it here, but I will leave some uh, links. In a nutshell, attacker needs to find a way to reroute the traffic through the evil genix proxy first the real server, as doing so, the user will be able to see the real site and not a replica as used in phishing site method. It means that the user will see the actual content exactly as he would see it in the actual site. But it also means that all communication to the, the user to the site contain not only the user and the password, but also the authentication cookie as well. This is very important. Now, why it's important? Because capturing the authentication cookie is gold. Since it allows the attacker to bypass any form of 2FA, it takes the real user authentication session and present it to the user so they could use later offline. Remember, it's not grabbing the actual tokens themselves as they can change frequently upon new user request. And it takes the authentication cookie from the successful attempt to log in again and gain full access without ever being asked for username, password or 2FA. If I will get 100 likes on this video, I will do a full demo of how it works. So, how to protect such uh, attacks? And there are two ways, actually. I think the easiest is to monitor the URL and verify that the domain you are visiting is the actual one from the browser. It's not that straightforward, but it's not difficult. The second is to use a U2F, Universal Second Factor, which is an hardware device which interacts directly with the server once a request was made for the first time code. The browser is only acting as a channel for communication and therefore not storing any info in the browser itself. Second method, pass the cookie. And the concept behind this kind of attack is that the user already authenticated with an MFA and website stored the cookie on the browser. Now, although the cookie is encrypted, the attacker is trying to retrieve it and decrypt the cookie online. Thus, the attack needs access to the web browser of the victim as opposed to the evil genix that uses as a proxy. So how can it be decrypted, you may ask? And by a tool called Mimikatz. And Jeff Warren, a cybersecurity and product expert at uh, Netflix, described in his blog how to do it step by step. So feel free to click the link on screen or in, I will leave it in the description for you to watch. But in a nutshell, once the attacker retrieves the cookie from the victim browser, he can pass it into his own browser and attempt to visit the target application as the authenticated user. Now, once the authenticated server attempts to request the authentication cookie, is presented or presenting the victim authentication cookie and the MFA is completely bypassed for the duration of the login. So how to protect against such uh, a technique? First, you can add the context to the user authentication methods, such as source IP or client certification. You can whitelist specific IPs with certs that have access. Second is use browser fingerprinting that can ask 
for new authentication whenever a, a new device or browser, a new browser is detected. The third method is SMS attack. And these attacks work by first doing a SIM swap on the victim's phone number. Now, a SIM swap is when an attacker transfers the phone number of a victim to their own SIM card, which is then controlled by the attacker. All phone and SMS messages are then sent to the attacker's phone instead of the victim. It means that one-time tokens also sent to the attacker's phone without the victim awareness. Now, SIM swaps are surprisingly too easy to do, and the FBI even issues a, a warning about a massive increase in SIM swapping uh, attacks. Look into it, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting, it's pretty easy to perform, unfortunately. The fourth method is attack on soft token. So according to CISOPerspective.com, while speaking about hardware and software-based to tokens, worth mentioning that when they are utilized, they too can be the weakest link in the chain. Software tokens have came under the biggest scrutiny lately due to recent major zero days that have been found on iOS and Android smartphones. While software tokens like Google Authenticator or RSA Secure ID Authenticate are generally considered secure, their nature of bring your own device means organizations still have to worry about malware to the phones themselves. In this attack, the victim's phone is compromised and used to retrieve the one-time code from the MFA uh, system. In one example used by a security researcher at NextWeb, a zero-day SMS exploit on Android made it possible to mirror the victim phone and even launch applications without their uh, knowing. The attacker can log in to the victim's phone, open the app in the background, and retrieve the one-time code. By having this level of access to the victim's machine, no secure software token is safe from preying uh, eyes. Similarly, hardware tokens uh, can fall victim to user errors as well. By doing some digging on Shodan for open uh, webcam, cybersecurity researcher could clearly see an employee RSA key fob through uh, watching a uh, webcam. Both of uh, these attacks illustrate the point that attackers can and will always find ways around the strongest security technologies to the least common demonator. So how to protect yourself from 2FA bypass? Here are some uh, suggestions. First, use a strong, unique password for each of your accounts. A strong password should be at least 20 to 25 characters long and include a mix of upper and lower case letters, number and special uh, characters. Use a different phone number or email address for 2FA than the one you use for the login. This way, even if your uh, login credential get compromised, the 2FA method is still protected. Be cautious of phishing attempts and suspicious links or attachment. Hackers may try to trick you into providing your 2FA code or stealing your authentication cookies through phishing emails or malicious website. Keep your device or app that generate the 2FA codes up to date. This will ensure that you will have at least the latest security patches and features to protect your account. Use an hardware token for 2FA and hardware tokens like uh, Fido, U2F, uh, Key and uh, YubiKey are more secure than an SMS or an app-based uh, 2FA as they cannot be intercepted or compromised that easily. Avoid using the same 2FA method across all of your accounts and hackers can exploit the fact that you might be using the same method across multiple accounts and steal the code for one account and then use it for another. Be cautious of public Wi-Fi networks. I, I speak a lot about it always, by the way, use a VPN. Avoid logging into your accounts on public Wi-Fi network as they can easily compromise by hackers. If you want to see a movie that, a video that I did about it, please, I will leave the link either here in the screen or here, or, and definitely in the description. Monitor your accounts regularly for suspicious activities and change your password if you suspect that your account has been compromised. Keep your computer and mobile device secure by installing antivirus software and keeping it up to date. 
use a password manager to generate and store strong, unique passwords for each of your accounts. I will leave my recommenda uh, recommendation in the description. Be wary of unsolicited phone calls or emails that ask for personal information, including 2FA codes. So to conclude, although what I showed here, the ways and methods for hackers to bypass the 2FA, should I still use 2FA, you may ask, or MFA? Yes, and even if it's not foolproof and can be bypassed in certain situations, it is highly recommended security measure to protect your accounts. The 2FA, the MFA adds an additional layer of protection to the traditional username and password login process, making it much harder to hackers to gain unauthorized access into your account. It's important to know there is no single security measure that can provide 100% protection. However, by using a combination of security measures such as a strong password, two-factor authentication, and regular monitoring of your accounts, you can significantly reduce your risk of having your account compromised. As the technology evolves and security standards change, it is important to stay informed and update your security measures accordingly. Even though hackers will always try to find new ways to bypass 2FA, MFA, security experts are always working on ways to improve it to make it harder for them to succeed. Overall, 2FA is a simple and effective way to add an extra layer of security to your online accounts, and it's highly recommended to use. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you like me to show you a tour of demo of in hacking in regards to this uh, uh, video, please let me know and see you in the next time.